I jumped on the ball here, and today we're doing another first 20 turn legendary difficulty guide for a faction in Total War Warhammer 2. You guys voted for Skaven, so I'll be covering Clan Moors. We must preserve this world. So, quick head takers initial challenge is considered very hard, but I would actually say that's not actually correct. It's not the hardest of the four Skaven Lords. I would actually say Tretch is the, is probably the most difficult. And that Ikit Claw, despite being ranked as hard, is actually by far the easiest because Ikit Claw is, quite frankly, overpowered. Now, Quick Head Taker is alright at the beginning of the campaign, but he's a bit of a meh legendary lord in my opinion. Now, before we get started on the guide, don't forget to post down in the comments below what guide you would like me to cover next. Whatever the top rated comment is, that's what we're going to cover. Anyway, let's get straight into the guide, and I'll cover the first 20 turns for Clan Moors. Okay, so here we are on turn one with uh, Clan Moors. Now, we've got a very intricate plan in mind for this, which if it works, will basically set us up really well for the rest of the campaign. Basically, before we hit turn 20, I want to have Kareg Orod at tier four. Now, how are you gonna do that that quickly, you might ask? Well, we're gonna lose the settlement. That's how we do it. Now, because the Skaven food mechanic, we can actually do that. What ends up happening is when you capture a settlement with Skaven, you can spend food to get a settlement up. You know, the more food you spend, the higher you can get it up. Now, in order to get something to tier 5, you need 120 food, which we can't have the capacity for. But we can get 80 food needed for Grand Warren. So what we end up doing is we lose this settlement to them, but we need to make sure that we've got food supplies. Then we retake the settlement, build it straight up to tier 4, and that will save us... 4,800 plus 3,200 without having to spend any of the growth that we accumulate as well. So, that's the main focus of what we need to do for probably the first 10 turns. Then after that, basically just punch these guys into oblivion. So, first thing, come over here, and we're going to want to recruit some clan rats, okay? In Queek's army, clan rats are significantly cheaper than everyone else's. But everyone else that we recruit is going to recruit Skaven Slaves because otherwise, it, otherwise it's just going to get too expensive. So over here, we want to build the Rattling Warren for primarily just so that we can actually start researching something. And over at the Undercity that we start off with, we need to demolish the Underkeep here because it just doesn't provide us with anything of any value right now. And we want to be building the Scavenger Raiders and also the warp token stash. Just demolishing this will give us 3,000 gold to play with, and we're going to need that money. Now, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to. You can recruit a warlock master. We got discipline, that's good. This turn, you could always save it for next turn. And we want him to be recruiting in global recruitment with some Skaven slaves. Again, you don't have to do this, but I would recommend doing it, because we had enough money for it. And that's all we need to do for this turn. This turn with Quake, come over here, attack this, and we're going to farm this for the food. This is where we're going to get all the food from. Now, you can fight the battle manually, but you really don't have to. It's probably going to make little to no difference in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, if you fight the battle manually, you can get a better result than that. But like I said, in, in the grand scheme of things, trust me, this isn't going to matter. Sack it for some money. And hopefully we get some good items, but it really is irrelevant. Even if you end up with complete trash, if you follow these steps, you should end up with the, the exact same result. Now, as for leveling up quick, we want to be going down the cunning route the for ambushes. So go Root Marcher, basically level 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That should be our, like our first 10 turns. Let's do it over here. Let's get him to recruit. And... Start researching that. Over here, if you've got enough money, you can build these up. Again, you don't have to, but I'm going to put in the warp, to warp token mint first because I'm probably going to need the uh, the money more than I'll need the food at this stage because we'll more than likely have enough food to, to do what we need to do because we only need 80. We're almost there anyway. So that's good. Don't build this up because, like I said, we're going to lose this settlement. Now that he's recruited a couple of troops, bring him in over here. Trust me, he'll be safe. The the greenskins will not attack. I don't think they can reach anyway. If you have a look, yeah, you can see they can't reach. Because if I can't reach them, there's no way they can reach me. So keep going with just Skaven slaves. 
And Quake once again sacks the settlement. Blood Resolve is fine. At this time, we go into Raid Stance. That way we get a bit of extra food, a bit of extra money, and also a bit of extra experience. Pop the point into there. And with the f money that we've got, we pop that up. Because it's important that we have a continuous supply of food. Now, on the note of the of the um, Undercity, you could grab this, but by building this, it's going to cost a bit of money. It'll take a bit of time. And you can see it has a constant food consumed, as long as with a maintenance cost. And the chances are it'll create one new Undercity every 20 turns. But really right now, because we don't have that much food income, or that much income to begin with, this could actually make the plan that we're trying to do fail. So I would recommend not doing it. That's entirely up to you. Um, if you've got enough money and you want to do it, you go for it. I'm not going to do it, at least not at this stage. So this guy just kind of noticed that his loyalty was low, but because he's recruiting, the larger your army gets, or the more you recruit, it, it, his loyalty is fine. As long as we don't disband him, he'll be fine. So we want to besiege it again. We've got 72 food. And also bring him in just enough so that he can reinforce, but also we want him to get back there as the end turn. It's just to give him a bit of extra experience. Once again, have Quick Raid. Actually, no, we're going to do this the other way around. I'm going to make this guy raid and have Quick come over here and he's going to recruit clan rats. Now, here's, here's where things go a little bit bonkers. Now we recruit another general. It doesn't really matter what you get. But probably best going off with the Warlord. And it doesn't matter what the trait is. Um, there's a knowledgeable one there. Because, yeah, don't, don't hire a knowledgeable one. Not yet, anyway. So we want to hire this dude here. Oh, I suppose I could have hired him. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And we just leave him in the city. Okay. Like I said, as of next turn, the, the absolute bonkers plan will be revealed. And you'll, you'll see what I mean by absolute bonkers. So yeah, that's all coming along. Money's not great, but it'll, it'll be okay. This isn't going to increase our upkeep cost by too much. And let's move on. Here comes the bonkersness. This dude here. Put him about here and put him in force march this guy this is a rat trap the whole point of this is to lure them into a situation that just is too delicious to deny that they can basically put them in rage to basically force them to go and capture the settlement get rid of this we're not going to need any more don't bother demolishing this because you only get 300 from from demolishing it anyway and just leaving an extra turn, um, just get more money out of it. So once again, we'll have uh, we'll have Quick attack this settlement here. Now it is unlikely that they can actually reach from here to there in a single turn. But what we'll probably end up seeing is one of their armies here next turn. They'll be like, "Ooh, that rat looks like it's a delicious meal," and it's it's right. You you're basically handing them a settlement on a silver plate. We've now got all the food that we need. Basically, it comes down to this. Next turn, they stand here. Next, and we capture this then, okay? And then we hide. We basically capture the settlement and hide, okay? That way they can't see our forces. Then, he comes in, he takes this, we order resolve it, that way the garrison gets wiped out, okay? Then they either sack, occupy, or raise the settlement. Any one of those options is totally fine. Ideally, you want them to occupy it. That way they're trapped in the settlement. But it really, it doesn't really matter either way. Okay, so all of that's set up, ready to go. Yep, let's do this. It's, it's bonkers, it's bonkers. But hey, if it works... Alright, so... They're coming at us. They're, they're coming at us hard and fast. It's an underway interception, so we can just decline the attack. It's More fine. Me, me. 
<laughs> they're like, <laughs> they could not get here any faster. They're like, mine, 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 mine. So we've got the settlement on a silver plate there for them. It's time for us to take this. It's important that we take this before we lose the settlement, or else we end up, you know, losing a lot of money, but also taking attrition. We don't want that. Although in raid stance, you don't end up, end up taking attrition. Now, in this particular situation here, I actually want this dude here to capture the settlement because I need Queek to actually move forward in ambush stance so that he's ready to recapture the settlement essentially next turn. It's a little bit tricky. Should be fine. So, sack it first. Could have had Queek do it, but we need his movement intact. And then... So, Queek didn't get a level up that time. If he had attacked it, he would have, but like I said, he needs his movement. And then we capture it. Whatever edict, it doesn't matter. Not gonna hold the settlement. Eh, whatever. Just in case they sack it. I guess we'll grab that. Okay. Now, as for Queek... We want to move close enough that they don't see us. Close enough that we can attack Karag um, Orod if if they do capture it, but also not too close that if our if our ambush is detected and they attack us, that we can withdraw outside of their range. So we need to make sure we're actually in Karag Orod. So just you know we can see from here where the settlement starts. Just about there should do. Move, move. Go into ambush stance so they don't see us. This guy here, he can just force march over here because the only re real reason we need this army is actually for his magic. And then we want him to be recruiting just some more escape and slaves will do. Could recruit uh, clan rats. Uh, actually, yeah, you know what? I will recruit clan rats because I could just transfer all of the units over to Queek and that way they won't be on force march and they, they perform better with Queek. Now that there, we might end up in the negative next turn. That's okay. As long as we can actually reach Karag Orod next turn, it just doesn't matter. Okay, we've got enough growth that we can start building this immediately. Now, we're going to gonna try and hold on to this, so that's fine. So, let's see, what do we need? We've already got the technology needed for that. Don't really need a lot of growth. So, what should we build here? Maybe, yeah, build the clan pit so that we can... Oh, you know what? Th this isn't actually even going to get recruited. If they capture the settlement, that building's gone. So, yeah, go with, go with slave and slaves. Um, and we'll build that. Actually, why don't we do a little bit of a test? Do a little bit of a test. If they do end up capturing this, they'll recruit from here. Look, if, the, if this doesn't end up recruiting anything, well then, experiment over, and at least you know for your campaign. Um, but honestly, what we've got with Quick Head Taker should be enough to recapture the settlement. Alright, all good. Now, if I upgrade that, that'll use up too much of our movement, uh, movement money. So just, just chill with that for the time being. So yeah, of course they're going to make the attack. We auto-resolve it so that the oh, army please. here gets completely wiped out. Which then gives them the chance to take our city completely undefended. They cannot resist it. And they capture it. Plan success! Now, it's possible that... In some playthroughs, maybe they'll bring in another army, but in all honesty, don't worry about it. If they do, that's why you built up the ambush stance, you just ambush the dudes hanging outside the settlement. I honestly probably would have preferred that. So, looking at them, yeah, they've probably got another army down here, and Queek is just got enough movement. Oh, he's got enough. Could have gone a little bit further back and we would have been fine. Now, this guy here can force march in to assist. So, let's do this. I'll be taking this back, thank you very much. And we have got enough food to get it to tier 4. Now, of course, we'll have to fight this battle manually, but that's okay. We've got everything that we need to get this done right. They do end up with getting a full garrison right away. Again, 
there's nothing to be concerned about here. We've got magic. Now we should only need to destroy one one tower here. Just this one here. These guys, bring them in over here. Oh great, the artillery bug. Just fantastic. That's right, shouldn't make that big of a difference, but ugh, the artillery bug is annoying. So the artillery bug is where, despite having a clear line of sight, artillery don't shoot the towers. You just gotta move around until you find the clear line of sight. Might be better if I actually aim. Yeah, okay, we'll just aim for the other one. Just for some reason, it just couldn't hit this. So we'll go around it the other way. Anyway, them trying to shoot these rats here, it's like... They're just really inaccurate, so it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, we just want to destroy one tower. Because we don't have a lot of ammunition, and it'll create a blind spot by destroying this. The blind spot is between here and there. Those lines there, that's the blind spot. Okay, they're gonna, they're gonna lose access to the tower if they keep this up. Okay, that's actually good. Okay, since they've got all their troops over here, it's a little bit risky, but I'm gonna bring my guys over here, and I'm just gonna put the, uh, the, the Grey Seer up this, not Grey Seer, the Warlock Master over here. That way, if they do reoccupy the tower, See, what they're doing is they're putting all of their troops up here to to defend against what they expect as the imminent attack. But if we put our artillery here, they've got a clear line of sight to absolutely obliterate most of these units. That's what we're trying to do here. Also, we should get in reasonably close and start using his magic. Oh, our power reserves are terrible. That was really unlucky. So we get one shot of this, this to be useful. We can just get close enough. In their biggest cluster. With one shot, we've killed 56 green skins. Because it shoots all the way down the line here. Just absolutely obliterating them. That's what we wanted to do. It's like a fucking railgun. Racking up those kills very nicely. Now, since our um, Skaven slaves are already are already um, exhausted, we didn't end up recruiting those clan rats either. Oh well, no for next time. Um, it's fine for to put them up on the walls. Sort of. Need to make sure Quake's over there, ready to help him out. So they're out of ammo now, put them over here where they're out of the possible place to get shot. And you want to put Quake up on the wall as well. Alright, now that we've got gained control of the walls over here, I'm going to send a few clan rats to come in over here and start bash down the gate. Okay, to down, good. Send in reinforcements. The most important thing during this battle here is that you keep your army together and that you don't rush the battle. I know some people don't like the whole cheese in the siege thing, but patience is really important because the enemy garrison will never send their full force against you unless you send their your full force against it so by coming up on the wall slowly sending guys around once you've captured the, the towers and getting that situation there where i was able to pincer them and get a huge route going that's won us the battle here and our forces are still in really good shape e except for like quick and a few um a uh, few skaven slaves but you know the storm vermin is still in excellent shape and they're the real killers of the army We've got a huge broken load of crap here. That's, like I said, it's won us the battle. So that gave us enough food to get us right up to our max capacity. And a fair bit of gold to go on top of it. No point sacking it. And then, boom, 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 straight to tier 4. Can't go up to tier 5. Loot and occupy. And there we have it. 
the settlement is now tier 4 on turn 7. So that there was phase 1 of the, uh, of the guide. Now the next 13 turns, we consolidate. So, got a fair bit of growth, got a fair bit of money. Now we need to rebuild the, uh, the clan war headquarters, but it only takes one turn. This is why I said it's not that big of a deal that we lose the settlement. We've got the rubbish pit here. I don't think we need that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna destroy it just yet. Let's have a look at what we could get. Uh, Obsidian Core, we don't have any trade agreements, so we probably need that. Uh, covert choke points, probably don't really need that. Just seeing what else. Um, we should really try to get some Plague Claw catapults, but we're low on cash. Costs 5,000 to build it, but isn't there something in... Yeah, yeah, this one here, we can reduce the construction cost by 10%. So build that first, and then just leave all these empty and we'll build it next turn. Now, as for the Arachnorok... Sorry, Arachnorok. The Arachnos here... We didn't really drop down their strength rating that much. Okay. So we should probably get some more... Oh, like I said, we really want to get that other, other building. We want to try to attack them now while they're... Uh, while they're weakened. Now that uh, Quake's got additional... Uh, ambush success chance. No, I'm going to leave it as it is. Not going to recruit anymore. So yeah, this region here had really calm power reserves. That's what really screwed us over on this battle. On, the, on that battle there. Not really screwed us over, but, you know, we could have really used a few more casts. So we're not going to spend anything else just yet. Now, of course, in doing what we did with Karagorod, we are now on a little bit of a dangerous supply of food. So now we need to try and get it back up. Luckily, the re we timed this just perfectly so that a rebellion occurred, so that we can get a little bit of food out of that. Your prestige grows. And a whole bunch of money too, I could have actually recruited. Conquests spreads far and wide. Master Engineer. So looking at them, our strength ranking is higher than them. Okay, and they've probably got two armies sitting there, so we need to press the attack now. What now? Okay, so like I said, we want to build this building here specifically. You definitely want Plague Claw Catapults and a Warlock Engineer. Crucial units. And upgrade that. Which I probably could have done last turn. Oh well, it doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. Then we'll probably also want to get public order and also increase our income in the province by 60% with that. I'll leave that one empty just for the time being. So with these rebellions, you definitely want to fight them manually. There's nothing much to it. But you want to fight it manually so that you can fight it twice, as opposed to just auto-resolve it and wipe it out. So you can see here, the Queek has a really good chance of ambushing as well, because that was succeeded. Now, when he gains another level up, we'll be able to increase it even further. Cool, oh, bit of extra food. And we're going to need even more food. Keep that coming. Good, potion of healing. Give that to Queek. Better than Skaven, bro. Warlock, yeah, that guy got the scope for it. That's fine. As long as someone's got it. This time we can order resolve it. Still the food didn't quite come out from there. That's okay. Now we can see what's going on down here. Not the end of the world if this doesn't work. But yeah, we need to make sure this actual succeeds with the ambush. Which it did. Good. Okay, it says the odds aren't really... Well, it's about mid, but we, sh we should be fine. We should be fine. 
we don't need to actually utilize the ambush itself. It's really just a case of trying to use the lightning strike. That's that's the main purpose of the ambush. So what I want to do here is have these two guys try to snipe the general. Queek's really good at sniping generals that are on foot. But he's not in great shape, so just got to be careful it didn't take too much damage. Good. Okay, general down. These guys won't last that much longer in combat now. E captives just doesn't provide us with enough units replenished. So, at least we're back up to the mid in terms of um, food. Just keep going with that food coming up. Okay, they're not going to get any replenishment, so that's good. Alright. There's no way that whatever they recruit, that they're going to be able to defeat us, even if we're on Force March. So, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to Force March back here for the turn. Just to get the tiniest pitiful amount of replenishment that we can get. Because it's better than nothing. So when it comes to Queek, casualty replenishment rate's pretty good. So yeah, life is very cheap, sounds good to me. And that's actually going to give us a significant amount of replenishment. Cool. So as of next turn, we basically start sacking the crap out of Mount Arachnos. Now what are we going to build here? So yeah, I'm going to go with the weapons borrow because that's just such an important building. You gotta get rattling guns and jezels. Some of the best units in the game. So we should be in good enough shape to be able to take this out. Let's get an idea of how many troops they actually recruited. So that was the army that we defeated. They recruited four units. Shouldn't be a problem. Now because there's so many different armies here, Creek should actually be able to pick them off one at a time with, with his ambush chance. So let's just get in a little bit closer here with their reinforcements. Plenty of movement range. Ambush. Yep. Thanks for the easy experience, bitch. Now, what we want to do here is have this dude besiege the settlement. And Queek launch the attack. He should be able to launch the attack on the straggler over here. So we're going to be trying to get as many victories as possible. So we can't reach this guy down here this turn, but he's no real threat. This over here can't auto-resolve it. Well, I mean, we can, but, you know, that bounce of power is not exactly ideal. Given the situation here, I think what I'll do is actually break the siege. And have Queek do it. Because that way we can establish our artillery right at the start. We can start moving towards Crimson Guard. Odds aren't actually quite as good, but I'm pretty confident we'll be fine. I think these were actually the reinforce uh, the, the the army that we defeated last turn. I don't think we're going to hit the moving target like that. Well, now it's not moving. Now shoot it. Now you might be wondering why I'm not really trying to like wrap around them and flank so much. Here's the thing. We want to try and keep our troops as close together as possible due to the leadership buff. And at the end of the day, it's pretty easy just to keep bombing them. In other Total War games, you know, flanking's pretty useful, but it, honestly, in Total War Warhammer, it's not really that important. At least not until we've killed the general. God, they read it super quickly. I don't even know why I was worried. I mean, I wasn't worried. I don't know why the, the order resolve was worried. Cool. None of Venus got wiped out. Decisive victory. Good amount of food. And we're just going to sack the settlement. Yes, 
Now, capturing this settlement, we could do, and we can get it up to tier 3. But we'll just have the same problem. We'll end up back to here. So, once again, just force march back over here. So we get some replenishment. Don't need to recruit any more units. They're not going to recruit anything. They might recruit another general, but that doesn't really matter. We should probably transfer some units over to Queek, because he gets extra replenishment rate. Good. Oh, that looks good. Okay. For edicts, we could put down a dominating scheme, but money's, like, probably a little bit tight. Public order plus four. We don't really need the growth that much, thanks to already being at tier four here. Um, so I think we'll, it's not that tight. It's just there's a lot of things I want to upgrade since it is tier, a tier four settlement. So let's just save up the money for the time being. Actually, now that we've got some money, now we can go ahead and build this. All right, yeah, you get over here and you make the attack. Once again, just sacking it because, you know, we need the food. But this time we can just auto resolve it. Well, I guess what I could do is have him stay here and just send Queek back. That way he'll be able to raid next turn. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of a tricksy thing. Okay, so this will be good to set up a a um undercity somewhere. Let me just see here. First thing, though, we should get a Warlock Engineer. Otherwise, we won't be able to get the Warlock Engineer. Confident. Disciplined. Very nice. Shame I'm not actually doing a Let's Play here. I'd want to continue this campaign. It's going so well. Um, yeah, and then we pop this down. Because if we have a look now, we'll be at uh, two out of one. And we'll send him somewhere where we're probably not going to go and conquer to go and create a, another Undercity. So maybe... Yeah, just go out that way. It'll be fine. This guy, he'll be attached to Creek's army. Okay. Now here's, here's the next tricksy thing I guess we're going to do. We still want to keep sacking this settlement. You, think, you might be thinking, oh yeah, he's going to keep sacking it, but once he hits 110 food, he's going to occupy it. No. Incorrect. I'm going to sack this city, yes. But this is not the sec next settlement we're going to capture. This is our food supply right here. Okay, there's something over here. So the plan here is actually to go and occupy the Lost Plateau first, using the smaller army. Now, he should be able to launch the attack here, but Queek would have to come down and assist. I need to know what they've got. Should be fine. I have to be on Force March, but not a problem. Good, and best we just get rid of them. You will toil. And this dude needs to... Doesn't matter if he takes his attrition, get down here so that he can go and occupy this. Arachnorok... Sorry, Arachnorok. Arachnos has no strength left. They don't have any other forces, so it's fine. Quake will continue sacking this to get food. Probably going to cost us a little bit of money to do this. That's fine. Um, could search the ruin first. It's a lot of money to pay for, for doing it. Um... But at the same time, we can get it straight to tier 3. We'll use up most of our money. Yeah, searching the ruin will only get us, you know, a thousand gold. I wouldn't worry about it too much. So, public order's alright at the moment. But we probably will need to build the public order building here. Yeah, eventually. And Queek needs to continue stacking it. Now, something that might end up happening is that might, they might get a revolt here. Let me see. Yeah, if we keep this up, they'll get a revolt. And in which case, we'll farm their revolt. 
Okay. Now our hero over here, we should get him to try and steal technology. There's always a possibility that this could backfire and we get a hero wounded. I have a notoriously... Um, <laughs> It's notoriously common for me to get critical failures, despite really good odds, but we'll see what happens. Failure, that's okay, that's okay. At least we didn't get a critical failure. Okay, once again, we'll try again with the stealing technology. Another failure, like I said, I have notoriously bad luck with this stuff. But it is a good way to level them up, yeah, if it's going to succeed. So our max food capacity is now at 115. So wait until 115 before we actually go and occupy that. As for Karak Zorn, ugh, that's beyond the 20 turn guide, but that would be probably what you'd want to take on next. This is where the ambush stuff and also the artillery would be most useful. Okay, so over here, we really don't want any of these minor settlements to revolt. So, probably we'll need to build this, just for the time being. And even if we've got this, we need 120 food if you want to get this to tier 5. So, it would be good to start building up, building up some food supplies. Start bringing him back. I could have actually brought him back this turn, but to, to make that attack there, but it's fine. Alright, so... Once again, siege it, but I need this guy to get some experience as well, but like he is heading back over this way. Okay, so this turn, time to, for him to get rid of these Skaven Slayers. Uh, he's got to be careful when disbanding units, because it might drop his loyalty. So rather than disband them, instead merge them. I think that can bypass it. Okay. I mean, he's at 9, so he should be fine. And Plague Claw Catapults take two turns to recruit, and we're going to want four of them. <laughs> I am mighty. At least four, really. That used up all of our money. That's okay. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Maybe, you, you know what, we'll hold off on it for this turn. I'll just have him come down here, get some extra experience. We'll recruit him next turn, because I still need to use the agent action as well. Although that might have given us enough money to do it, but it is fine. I still could do it, actually. Let me just see. Another thing that I could have done, well, if we had avail availability for a right, if we do this right here, hero action success chance plus 13%, that would help with our, with our success slash failure rate. So, after feeling, finishing off Specialists, we're probably going to want to uh, focus on this stuff here to really improve the artillery, because they're going to be attached to here, which will help us against Karak, Nor uh, Karak Zorn. Same thing over here. Yeah, we're going to want Storm Vermin available. So, grab that. And on this minor settlement here... Yeah, let's get the rubbish pile built up because that'll increase our local recruitment and also give us, um, well, once we get to here, because it's dirt cheap as well, it'll give us um, extra money. So I could recruit the artillery now, but no, I don't see the point. So this will revolt in three turns. If we build this, this will ensure that after the next revolt, it probably won't revolt again, because that's a... That's an additional three public order. It is a lot of money to spend on it, but it's okay. Got to secure the province before we start thinking about the next one as well. This one over here, this technology, that'll also help us with, uh, with public order. Since there's always a chance that this guy here could... I mean, it's a slim chance. He could get wounded. I think it'd be best now if we just attach him into our army so that he just gains experience that way. It's just a lot safer now. And he'll still continue to gain that bonus um, 
bonus to uh, technology research rate. Not that it makes a huge difference. You know, for as long as it was like four or five turns. Machines and that sorcery. Kill, burn, steal. Right, there'll be a revolt pretty damn soon. Creek needs to get close enough to get ready to, to do this. Okay, we're at 107 food out of 115. When we sack it this time, we're pretty much going to be at max food, so it's time to actually take it. I'm going to have Queek sack it first, but the other guy is going to occupy the settlement now. Right before they get a revolt. So that eliminates them. Oh. I forgot to put it up to <laughs> tier 3. <laughs> My mistake. Use the food to go up to tier 3. I just rushed that bit that right there. Um, and now that's going to cost us 4,500 because I, I, I did that. Uh, that was... Uh, it's not not the end of the world, but yeah, don't make don't make that mistake I just made there. Not a huge problem though. Okay, and then Please Quick needs to come over here. Cause the thing is we would have um used up quite a bit of food, but at the same time, this revolt over here would give us most of the food back. So this guy can continue getting some Skaven slave garbage. That's all we really need him to have. There is actually one little possibility here. If we can manage to get get that uh, food at 120, it's possible that when you capture the settlement here, you could actually get it straight to tier 5. Not recommended. Highly recommend you just uh, just get that one up to tier 3, and that one down there instead just go it to tier 5. Uh, sorry, to tier 4. Because um, otherwise you probably have to raid your own regions just to get the food back up. Um, Jeez, you could always... Do that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Again, with this one here, probably should fight it manually, but I think we can get away with an auto resolve. Yeah. Because if we fought this battle manually, we could fight it twice. But I'm sort of getting to the point of wrapping things up now. Public order here, it shouldn't revolt again, not for a good long while. I'll get him. Oh, I'll need him to keep recruiting Skaven slaves in here, yeah. Okay, and over here, it's now time to disband the Skaven slaves, and probably the gutter rudder slingers don't really need them so much anymore. So first up, Grab the Plague Claw Catapult, and then also, yep, then as of next turn, start getting Storm Vermin, Sword and Shield, and ones with Halberd. Um, like, the Sword and Shield are good against infantry, sort of, but the Armor Piercing is going to be especially useful against the Dwarfs, because that would be the next target, but we're at turn 19 now, so it's like we're starting to wrap things up. It's just planning ahead that uh, of what we would be doing if I was to continue on to the campaign at that point. Probably don't bother building any of that up right now, because you need to save up the recruitment can be a little bit expensive. And over here, what I was going to do with him was... I was going to bring him over to Akendorf. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Akendorf or Barakvar, either one's fine. It's looking alright here. That'll still be another turn, but we can also start recruiting the uh, Storm Vermin this turn. Start removing the clan rats out of the army. Storm Vermin. So with Queek, he reduces the upkeep cost of Storm Vermin, so it's very viable for him to have have the Storm Vermin. Um, over here, like I said, just just trash into this army. It's this is just the cannon fodder. Now, as of next turn, the income our income is going to go down a fair bit, but I think it's important that food be maintained. So that's a really important building. Get that going. And as for this good dude here, he, oh, 
I was going to hit Barakvar, but it's under siege. So the original plan was to go to Akendorf, set up a uh, a warlock laboratory there, so that uh, you know get another undercity where we build pretty much the same sort of thing as this. That hasn't spread, but eventually it will. You could upgrade that if you really want to, but it will consume more food and, and money. At the end of the day, with this one here at the moment, it's actually costing us food, but providing us with a little bit of money. But it just saves us time having to send a, a warlock engineer out that way just to create one more uh, undercity. So that does pay for itself over time. Anyway, that's the end of the guide. So I think the only real mistake I made with this was, of course, not upgrading this straight to tier 3. Apart from that, everything else went well. But really, the main point of the, gu of the guide is to get this to tier 4 straight away. Having this at tier 4 before, rank, uh, before you hit turn 10 and being able to build all of these things you know, straight away will allow you to maintain public order, make a lot of money, and, you know, it saves you a lot of cash as well. So, because building these buildings up does cost a fair bit. And at no point were we really saving up tens of thousands of gold. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Hope it helps. And I'll see you in the next one, fuckers. Don't forget to let me know what you want for the next guide in the comments below.